Have your steam heated processes ever experienced unexplainable temperature drops, even though the system appears to be working fine? One reason could be a condition known as steam locking. Hi, I'm Sam from TLV, and today I'm going to explain steam locking and how you can prevent it. Steam locking is a condition that occurs when steam enters the trap in front of condensate and shuts off the trap valve, preventing condensate discharge. When air or another non-condensable gas, such as carbon dioxide, causes this condition, it is known as air binding. Steam locking is typically not caused by the steam traps themselves, because these are designed to close when the steam enters them. Rather, it is the configuration of the equipment or piping around the trap that typically causes the problem. Steam locking should not be left unresolved because problems can worsen over time. Because it's a difficult problem to pinpoint, it is important to understand typical setups that lead to the problem. Steam locking is likely to occur in either of the following two situations. Equipment configuration causes steam to be mixed in with condensate upon discharge, or the piping configuration causes steam to move ahead of condensate into a trap. Once we know the root cause of the steam locking instance, we can start to take action. When equipment configuration causes steam locking, one solution is to first discharge the steam condensate mixture into a receiver, such as a flash tank, before discharging condensate through a steam trap. The separated steam should then be returned to the heat exchanger for reuse. However, this setup can be difficult with certain types of equipment, such as rotating dryers that use a siphon pipe or internal scoops to discharge condensate. If reusing steam is not an option, then a different countermeasure is required. Another countermeasure is the use of a lock release valve or needle valve to allow steam to be released to the downstream side of the trap, fixing the steam locking problem. Since lock release valves and needle valves can control the release of steam, steam loss is minimized. A lock release valve uses the automatic venting feature of a steam trap such as an X element, to forcibly open the valve and release steam to the outlet side of the trap, fixing the steam locking problem. Alternatively, steam traps fitted with needle valves can be used in largely the same way, however these are manually operated. A needle valve releases steam to the outlet side of the trap either internally, if the trap has a built-in venting feature, or externally, by using a bypass line. An external bypass line is a practical solution to steam locking by allowing steam to bypass the trap. However, this is not always ideal as it requires additional installation of the line. Steam traps should not be installed at the top of vertical sections of piping because this can lead to steam locking. Piping configuration can cause steam to be locked within a trap and impede condensate discharge. You might not expect steam locking to occur if the hydraulic head pressure is large enough to overcome the steam locking. However, head pressure cannot resolve this type of problem because of the two following points. The pressure within a trap and within inlet piping leading to the trap are virtually the same. Or, when condensate is discharged only when the valve is open. Condensate and steam at the inlet side of a trap experience the same inlet pressure because traps are designed to discharge condensate with minimal steam loss. So steam, which has a lower density than condensate, will logically rise above the condensate when there is a vertical rise and enter the trap before the condensate, causing the valve to shut. Providing extra pressure to forcibly discharge condensate will not resolve the problem because the valve remains shut by steam. A steam locked trap will eventually be able to discharge condensate again when the locked steam has condensed. In the meantime, however, it may cause condensate backup in piping and equipment. If the problem is not resolved, it can then reoccur at every following discharge cycle. 
It might seem odd that steam locking only occurs from vertical sections on the inlet side of a trap, not the outlet. Flash steam at the outlet side of a trap will indeed rise to the top of vertical sections of piping. However, since no other traps follow, nothing remains to stop the steam from flowing out of the piping. This also applies to lines connected to an open or closed vessel, used to collect condensate, because these already require a negative pressure differential to function, allowing for smooth flow of condensate and flash steam. There are two other issues to account for when installing trap inlet piping. One is bends in piping, and two is narrow piping. Bends in piping occur when the required piping supports are not installed. This creates curves in the piping, where condensate accumulates and steam can become trapped. Narrow piping, even if installed parallel to the ground, can also cause steam locking, if the piping diameter isn't sufficiently large enough to allow condensate to flow ahead of the steam. One best practice, not only for steam locking mitigation, is to ensure a gentle downward slope in the trap inlet piping, with a ratio of no less than 1 to 100. This will allow condensate to gravity drain into the steam trap and should alleviate steam locking issues. And there you have it, some best practices to prevent steam locking. If you're experiencing steam locking in your plant, get in touch with TLV and ask for advice. Thanks for watching.